Hello, welcome back. Today I'm going to be answering some of the questions that you guys asked me on an Instagram post about a week and a half ago, maybe. I posted something on Instagram asking you what you would ask me if we happened to be having tea together, which would be absolutely amazing, let's face it. And there were amazing questions and I thought, do you know what, I'm going to record some videos answering all of these questions, which is exactly what I'm doing today. So I'm going to start with this first video answering some of the questions. There were too many, so I'm not going to answer all of them in one video because that would just be too long. But I hope that you will stay here and hopefully your question will get answered today. Right, so this first question is, how do you manage to do so many things? And I have to say, I love this question because I always have the impression that when we don't know people, you know, when we see people's lives on Instagram, social media in general, we create this illusion that that person is, in fact, a superhero. We do, don't we? But it's not really the case. You know, I do manage to do a lot of things. I do. You know, if you consider the fact that I am married, so obviously, you know, I have to give my husband some attention and spend time with him and do things together, you know, this requires some of my time. I have two children and they're still small, Mimi's six, Dom is seven, so, you know, they do demand a lot of time and attention. Um, my students from both my courses, 100 Days and Pronounce with Patty, on both courses, I am the person offering the support students need when it comes to questions and help and psychological support. I am the only person who offers that support to students. Uh, there are live lessons as well with the students weekly. Um, I also have obviously got myself, so things I do for myself exercising, taking care of myself, um, and I work from home, which means I have to organize my time. I think this is the thing, I have to organize my time, you know? And I have to take care of my house, I have to cook and do the laundry and all of these things uh, take up a lot of time. I also have a guitar lesson once a week, which I love. And I raise my kids bilingual, which means I have to dedicate some of that time to making sure they're learning well, their English is progressing, they're developing their skills, they can read well, that, you know, Mimi's learning to read in English and so we're working on that, working on Dominic's spelling, which can be a little bit crazy at times. But overall, overall, I think I'm just organised with my time. You know, and I don't do everything perfectly, you know, and I think that's, oh, obviously I forgot something that I think probably takes up most of my time, apart from the students with support, with the support they need, content for Instagram and YouTube. Yeah, so I forgot about that. That is a lot of, a lot of time every day, you know, holiday weekends, whatever, not feeling well, yeah, you know, life goes on, you got to do it. So I think the point is, I am just very organized with my time, and I, I am, generally speaking, and I try not to procrastinate too much, because naturally, I would say I'm a very big, massive, huge procrastinator, so if I allow that to take over me, I'll end up doing nothing because I'll just leave everything for tomorrow. So I try to be efficient in the way I do things um, and try to organise the time. And I don't do most of these things perfectly. So when I say, for example, that I'm doing the laundry at home, because this is part of what I have to do almost every day, I don't do it every day. So sometimes I can't do it or I forget or I'm tired or lazy and that doesn't get done so it might be that one of us runs out of something to wear it has happened yeah so do you see what I'm saying it's 
not perfect. I just try to manage what is a priority on that particular day or week. But don't be under the illusion that I manage everything really well, because that's not true, unfortunately. Next question is, hi Patricia, you said that you went to the UK with 15 years and no English. You said that you went to the UK at 15 with no English. What did you do to get the English that you have today? With almost no accent and fluent and, you know, she's basically asking about that. What was your strategy at that time? Well, um, I was... What you have to understand, and I think this is very similar to another question, which was how do you stay resilient with learning, something like that. When you live abroad and you're going to school and you're having a life there, you don't really have a choice. You're either going to expose yourself and learn the language so that you can pass your exams and go to college and go to university and build a life and make friends and have relationships and all of that, or you are not going to prosper you're not going to develop in any sort of way abroad. So some things, guys, are not really a matter of strategy or resilience. It's, in fact, a matter of survival. You know, and yes, I did go to England at 15 with no English at all. I had no English background whatsoever. So absolutely, it was something that was a setback, I would say. You know, it stopped me from achieving more because I spent a lot of time trying to learn the language and trying to master it and trying to make it better. Because this is the thing, you start learning and then you get to a point, all of us in different ways, you get to a point that you're not developing anymore. So if you keep on doing the exact same things you're doing, you're just going to feel stuck forever. And that's where strategy comes in for me. I was constantly, you know, meeting new people. Not that I had lots of friends, because I didn't, but I, I worked with lots of different people. I had, you know, a number of different jobs. And I went to college, then I went to university. And so that enabled me it made it possible for me to learn different things because the more people you know who speak a language, the more things you learn because people communicate in different ways. So if you're exposing yourself to lots of different situations with lots of different people, you're bound to always be learning, provided that you're listening. You know, And that, I think, was the key thing for me, I learned to listen very early on. When I, when I arrived in England, a number of things happened, things that I share on 100 days. So if you have done 100 days, you know this. Um, things I share on 100 days about situations that made me learn the way I did. So it's not one particular thing. It's a number of things that push you to act in a certain way. Next question is, when are you going to write your book? Now, this is the question, really. It was one of my huge professional goals to write a book because I love writing. Uh, I'm good at it. I went to university. I studied literature with creative writing. It's something I like. It's something I can do quite well. And so I use that skill on 100 Days because 100 Days is about 100 real stories that happened to me when I was learning and I wrote all of them. So um, at 100 Days, if you put all of the material together, it's like a 600 page book, you know. So I, I've written a book, I have. I just don't sell it as a book because I transform that into a course. Um, but I would love to write a book about other things that I never shared on 100 Days. Uh, I do, would you believe, I still have lots to say. God, because, I, because I'm so observant, you know, and I listen so closely and I, I try to, to be very present in the situations that I'm exposed to. 
which I think is probably why I would have so much to say. Um, so I do, when am I going to write my book? That's the question, isn't it? I don't know. Um, I don't know when. My husband thinks I should have started already. <laughs> And I, I should just write it, even if, I, if it doesn't get published or I don't sell it, I should just write it and get it out of my system. You know, get it out of my system, do it. I don't agree with that. I would rather have a contract for a book and write it that way. So I think I'm just probably waiting for something to come along. Um, but I would love to do it and I probably will at some point. Next question and last question for this video, there will be more, don't worry. Do you plan on learning a new language in the future? Do you plan on learning a new language in the future? No. And I'll tell you what and why. I don't plan on doing it, which does not mean I will never. Yeah, I'm not thinking about it because I don't plan on being in a situation that another language will be needed for me, which is why I always talk to, to you guys about why do you want to learn English? You need to have a reason. Without a reason, you're not going to do it. Same for me. I don't have a reason to learn another language, whatever it may be. And I'm not even talking about huge reasons like I'm moving to Italy. I need to learn Italian. No. I love Italian, I need to learn Italian, that's a reason, but I don't have this feeling about any other language. I like so many of them, I think languages are amazing, I really think it's a fantastic thing to learn languages, but I would rather dedicate my time to other things, priorities, I always talk about that, because I don't feel that it's um, necessary for me at this moment in time. So I don't plan on doing it, which is not to say I will never. I want to thank you all for all your questions. There will be more videos, lots more coming up about this so I can answer all of the questions. And leave a comment if one of these questions happened to be yours. Thank you so much for being here today. See you all next time. Bye.